The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Transcribed and presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Here in the Equitable Life Assurance Society, we never lose sight of the fact that our equitable radio messages go into millions of homes. Because of this, we feel that it is our responsibility to key these equitable commercials to home and family problems. Tonight's message concerns education. Are there young children in your home? Then you'll be interested in getting the facts on the Equitable Education Fund. For full details, listen carefully in just 15 minutes. Tonight's FBI file, The Melancholy Mind Reader. More than a million and a half major crimes are committed in the United States every year. And they are committed for a variety of reasons. Some are the result of passion or temper and are usually unpremeditated. Some are the result of an overwhelming desire for revenge. But for the most part, crimes are committed because the criminal is overcome with greed. That type cannot wait until he has earned what he desires, because waiting, to his point of view, is needless. Take what you want when you want it, is his personal credo. And in order to live up to that, he will stop at nothing. Not even murder. Tonight's FBI file opens on the grounds of a large carnival that's playing an engagement in a Midwestern city. A stroll along the midway reveals the usual assortment of candy butchers, drink purveyors, pitchmen, and, oh yes, the mind reader. His tent, larger than the rest, bears a huge sign reading, Carrie, the Mental Marvel. In the rear of this tent in the living quarters, Carrie, the Mental Marvel, in person, reclines on a cot. His wife is discussing his work. That was a great little show you just did. Great. What, baby? I'm talking about your performance. It's a wonder we weren't booed off the stage. Oh? Look, will you put down that bottle for a minute and listen to me? Go ahead, May. Do you realize what a fool you made of yourself out there tonight? And what a bigger fool you made of me? Oh. You were so drunk you blew 50% of the answers. That's many? Yes, that many. I have an object here in my hand. It belongs to someone near and dear to the owner. Identify the object, please. What do you come up with? A black sedan. Gotta laugh, didn't I? (sighs) What's the use? Look, baby, quit steaming, huh? Just a two-bit carny. Who cares how we do? You'd better care. And you'd better start right now. Whether you realize it or not, kid, this is last stand Nebraska for you. Well, thanks. And I mean it. You and that bottle have taken us down a real fast slide. May, you'd better change that billing. What do you mean? Put yourself in that act. What are you talking about? You're the little girl that brought me and the bottle together. Are you kidding Just think back, May. It adds up awful easy. Oh, you're not going to start that old routine again. How I've run around with other guys. How I made a sucker out of you. How I drove you to drink. Honey, that's every drunk's excuse since bums laid on their backs and squeezed it out of grapes. In my case, it happens to be true. I can prove it to you, May. I can show you where I... Uh... Wait. Lancaster's on. Yeah, the great Lancaster. He is great. He's magnificent. Look at him. Watch him ride that motorcycle on nothing but a wire. There he goes. Oh, Oh, that's a man. I think I'll really get drunk. Can 
I come in, Roy? Huh? Oh, sure, May. Come ahead. Aren't you through packing? Oh, just about. When does the train leave? About an hour. I thought you were wonderful tonight, honey. You watched? Yeah. Scared to death, too. About me? Yeah. You mean that I'd miss? Mm-hmm. Hey, look, sweetheart, I ain't blown a trick in five years. Oh, Roy, when that motorcycle turns upside down in the air, my heart does the same thing. <laughs> I just can't help it. That's on account of the guy who's riding it. Am I right? You are right. Come here. How'd you get away so early? We didn't do our last show. How come? Frank was fractured. Oh. I thought he was on the wagon. He was for a fast five minutes. He started drinking again this morning. Oh, May, why do you put up with that guy? He's the only wheel in town. That ain't so. You got to deal with me, honey, anytime you want it. What would that prove? Hey, look, you go for me, don't you? Sure. Well, then why ain't we together? Because I made a little deal with myself. The only move I make is in the direction of money. Well, that don't belt me off. I'm afraid it does, Roy. I got a hundred a week from this outfit. And look at my billing. I'm talking about real money. In lumps. Is that why you hooked up with Carrie? Mm-hmm. That bum has money? Well, he did have when I met him. He was a big star then. Just my luck, he started down the day I married him. Oh, that could happen again. Oh, no, it couldn't. I'll be smarter with the next guy. Look, if I have to get dough to get you, I'll get dough. How? I don't know, and I don't care. But don't worry, I'll get it. Honey, if you really don't care where you get it, I think maybe I can help you out. <laughs> Several days later, in an FBI field office, agent in charge Newton is just greeting a visitor. Sit down, Mr. Pomeroy. Thank you, sir. As I understand it, the local police sent you here. That's right. They told me that my case came under your jurisdiction. Yes, I've heard enough of the facts to believe it does. I wonder if you'd mind giving me the whole story. Well, as you already know, I'm the owner of a carnival called the Pomeroy Wonder Show. Yes. We just finished playing a week's engagement in Cleveland last night. I see. Then we packed and moved on here to Detroit. We have our own private train. Mm hmm. Well, sir, last night, somewhere between Cleveland and here, a money car was broken into. The safe was cracked, and over $30,000 was taken. When did you discover this? Not till the train pulled in here this morning. Did you keep a watchman in the car? Yes. He was slugged from behind. He was still unconscious when I found him. He had no idea who gave it to him. Did you immediately notify the police? Yes, sir. They came right over, searched the car. They didn't seem to find any clues at all. I've sent one of our agents over to help them on the search. Good. You, uh, you say this was a special train, Mr. Pomeroy? Yes, sir. Nobody travels on it but our performers and crew. It's very likely, then, that this is an inside job. Mm -hmm. That's uh, how I feel. Have you checked to see if anyone is missing from the show? Yes, I did. Everybody is accounted for. Well, if a thorough search of the money car doesn't give us any clues, I'd like to assign an agent to your show. Give him a job. Let him mingle with the people. That'd be fine. I'll have to look in our avocation file for a man who'd be qualified for the job. Uh, suppose you come back here this afternoon, Mr. Pomeroy. I'll have that agent ready. Roy, can I talk to you? Oh, yeah, sure, May. Come on over to my tent. Okay. I see you got your wire up early. Yeah. Pomeroy asked me to do an extra show. He's expecting big business. Oh. How's Carrie? Still drinking. Any work today? <laughs> Just about. Go ahead, May. Right. Roy, you did it. Yeah. How much did you get? Over 30000 Honey, honey, that's wonderful. Did you have any trouble? No, it was a breeze. I hear the watchman's in the hospital. He'll be okay. Oh, you're terrific. Where's the money? In that repair box. Well, that's no good. Well, I don't know what else to do with it. You got any ideas? You better let me take it. Well, where'll you put it? In with my costumes. Oh, but May, that's now, not look, a good place. Now, look, I lined this job up, didn't I? It was me that made it come off. Oh, yeah, but I took Honey, all the... let me handle the money. Hmm? Oh, okay. I'll take it over to my tent right now. Hey, wait a minute. 
Martin. What's our next move? How long do we stick it out here? Not long. A few days at the most. Oh, now, May, we can't leave that soon. They'd know we have the money. Not the way I'm laying it out. What do you mean? Come to my tent after the show's over. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> Send for me, Mr. Newton? Oh, yes, Jim. Come on in. All right, sir. I'd like you to meet Mr. Pomeroy. Pomeroy, this is Special Agent Taylor. Hi, Mr. Taylor. How do you do, sir? Mr. Pomeroy is the owner of a carnival called the Pomeroy Wonder Show. Oh, yes, sir. Just reading a report on that. Then you know all the details on the robbery. Well, everything that's come in, yes, sir. Good. Is this the young man you had in mind, Mr. Newton? Yes. Uh, Jim. Sir? According to our vocation avocation file, you once worked for a carnival. That's right, sir. I worked one summer while I was on vacation. In school. Uh, whose show was it? Paris Brothers. Oh, yeah. I know them well. What was your job at the show, Jim? Oh, I started out doing almost everything. But before the summer was over, I had a steady job spilling with a geek show. What in the world is a geek? That's a character who eats little tidbits like razor blades, broken light bulbs. Oh, yes. So that's what they're called. Were you a good spieler, Mr. Taylor? Well, the jury is still out on that one. Uh, give Mr. Pomeroy a sample, Jim. Oh, now, wait. No, I'm I... serious. If you qualify, I'll give you a job. So you see it's in the line of duty? Yes, sir. Uh, well, here goes. All right, step right up, folks. It's the new show, the thrill show, the biggest show on the Midway. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Young man, you can report to the lot tomorrow morning. You are hired. <laughs> Is that you, Frank? Yes, Mike. Well, where have you been? I just took a little walk. Uh, to that last show, I, I had to. I thought I was going to faint right on the stage, Mike. Yeah. I noticed you had the jumps pretty bad. Why don't you lie down? Huh? Stretch out. I'll get a cold cloth for your head. Well, thanks, Mike. Pomeroy was in here looking for you. Uh, what do you want? Well, he was pretty sore about the way you've been drinking, missing shows. Can't say I blame him. What'd you tell him? Said that you were very sorry, that you knew you'd been doing wrong, and was trying to straighten out. I am, May. I am trying. Sure. You know something? Mm -hmm. If you just keep on being like you are now, it's it'd be the easiest thing in the world. I'll try, Frank. I'll try. Here's the cloth. Huh. Oh, well, that feels good. Mm -hmm. How many drinks have you had today? Uh, only half a dozen since noon. Pretty good, huh? Oh, honey, it's too good. What do you mean? I don't want you counting little pink things. You just can't stop that quickly. Well, I'm just trying to taper off. But you're going too fast. Here, have a drink. Well, uh, well you're the doctor. That's right. <coughs> Thanks. Honey, I've just been thinking about Mr. Pomeroy. Hmm? You know what you ought to do? What? Write him a little note, an apology note. That should help square things. All right, man. I'll do it first thing in the morning. Oh, Frank, I know you. If you're going to write it at all, you write it now. Yeah, but May, I... Put paper right over here. Very efficient woman. Here you are, dear. Just to spoil you completely, I'll even tell you what to say. Ah, gee, May. Uh, dear Mr. Pomeroy. Huh? Stop writing. Oh. oh. Uh, dear Mr. Pomeroy, I am sorry for what I did. Mm. Mm. Got that? Uh, yeah. Um, I was drinking. I... Well, go uh, on, write it. I, I'm trying to. Okay. Please forgive me. You got that? Please forgive me. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll just sign your name. Yeah. Is, is that all? Yeah, that's enough. Uh, very well. May. What? May, I... I feel funny. Really? I gotta... Can I come in? Huh? Oh, sure, Roy. Come ahead. Hiya, Carrie. Well, he's passed out, huh? No. He's dead. We will return.
return in just a moment to tonight's case from the files of your FBI. How those grand old college songs take you back. Back on a magic carpet to ivy-covered walls and carefree college days. Yes, I'll never forget the good times I used to have. Ah, but you've got more than memories out of college, Ed. Those four years were worth money to you. Plenty of money. Do you realize that the average college graduate earns $72,000 more during his working years than the average American? Of course, there are exceptions. People of outstanding ability who go far with very little education. But that doesn't alter the fact that college is the best investment loving fathers and mothers can make for their children. Believe me, I hope there's nothing to prevent my kids from going. Nothing can prevent them, Ed, if you start an equitable education fund now. Equitable education fund? What's that? It's a surefire plan offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society, and it includes these important features. One, you start when your children are young and spread their educational costs over 10 or 15 years instead of taking a licking in four. Two, when your boy or girl is ready for education, the money is ready and waiting for him, right there in the Equitable Education Fund. Three, this equitable plan works whether you live or die. If you are totally or permanently disabled, the fund continues to build up without any further payments. If you die, the education fund becomes fully established immediately. Sounds swell, Mr. Keating. Whom do I see about starting one? The man to see is your equitable society representative. Give your children their chance to earn that extra $72,000 by getting in touch with your equitable representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Melancholy Mind Reader. Criminals, in the very nature of their business, are professional optimists. Because despite the overwhelming evidence to prove that criminals do not escape the web of the law, they continue to practice their illegal behavior. No criminal ever expects to pay for his crime. And the fact that other criminals do does not deter him. For his ego tells him that he is not only smarter than his fellow criminals, but also that he is smarter than any policeman in the world. To protect that ego and to prevent his capture, he will sacrifice anything or anyone, be that person brother, sister, wife, or husband. There's not the slightest strain of loyalty in any criminal, because he lives by one rule which says, do anything you want to do, but don't get caught. <laughs> Tonight's file continues the following day at the Carnival Grounds. FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor is entering the office of Mr. Pomeroy, the owner of the show. Oh, come in, Mr. Taylor. Thanks, Pomeroy. Were you over in Kara's tent? Yes, I just finished preliminary investigation. Not a great deal to investigate, was there? Oh, what do you mean? Well, he sent me that note saying he was sorry, asking me to forgive him. And? Part of the stolen money, still in one of our cash wrappers, was found in one of his pockets. That's right. Gary obviously committed the robbery, got remorse, wrote me the note, then committed suicide. Well, it's all very logical, Mr. Pomeroy, but I don't believe any of it. Oh, now, just a minute, Mr. Taylor. I don't like to dispute you, but I happen to know Gary's handwriting. He did write that note. Oh, I'll concede that, but I still question the circumstances under which he wrote it. And won't you concede that he had a motive? What motive? His wife. Hmm. She was carrying on with Lancaster. Stealing the money was his chance to make himself a big man in her eyes. Uh, am I allowed to rebuttal? Surely. Let's have it. All right. First of all, over $30,000 was stolen. Now less than $1,000 was found in Kerry's pockets. Well, he could have hidden the rest. Oh, possibly. But I have a second and even stronger point. I found an unmailed letter in Kerry's coat pocket. Yes? It was addressed to a friend in New York. In it, Kerry stated that he could not pay back the $50 he owed this man as he didn't have it. He promised to pay him as soon as he got his hands on any cash. Well... Well, that letter was written the night after your money car was robbed. Oh. Now, if Carly Rhea really had that money, he wouldn't have written such a letter. Well, yeah, there is something to that. So, you see, uh, I want to wait for the autopsy and find out more about how Carrie died. Meantime, Mr. Pomeroy, this case is far from closed. Who's there? 
Me, Roy. Oh, come in, honey. Are you alone? Yeah, finally. I thought you were coming over to my tent. I couldn't. Why not? Well, there's been 45 investigators here this morning, including one from the FBI. Any of them suspicious? Why should they be? Well, May, after all, you and I... Shut up. I'm sorry. You know as well as I do, Roy. Frank stole the money, then committed suicide. Yeah, yeah. May, where is the money? I've got it hidden. How the hell am I able to search this place? I'm not worried. Uh, look, hadn't I better keep it for a while? No. Hey, isn't it time for you to go on? Well, I've, I've cut my first show. What for? Uh, well, if you must know, I was too nervous. Why, you stupid... Look, I take chances on that motorcycle. When I got the shakes, I missed that wire. I thought you never missed. I haven't. Well? Well, I've never been mixed up in anything like this before, either. <laughs> Stop being such a baby. <laughs> Go on back to your tent. I'll see you later. Mr. Newton, I'd like to bring you up to date on that carnival case. Well, Jim, I read your report just a while ago. No. I gather you don't hold with the suicide theory. No, sir, I don't. I agree with you. Did any more of the money turn up? No, not yet. How about the coroner? Did he make his report? Yes, that came in just a little while ago. Kerry died of poisoning, all right. The coroner gave me the name of the poison used. It, it's not too common. I'm I see. having a check made now on all drugstores to see if they've sold any in the last few days. Jim, from your report, Kerry's wife doesn't sound like too sterling a character. Well, from all I could gather, she isn't. Did you question her at all? No, no. I preferred to have her think that I went along with that suicide theory. Now I'm very glad that I did. Why is that? Well, as you saw in the report, it's common gossip around the carnival grounds that she was carrying on with a performer called the Great Lancaster. Mm -hmm. He does a pretty spectacular stunt on a motorcycle. I see. Out of the best of my knowledge, a stuntman working as he does would be liable to use rosin, wouldn't you think? I would think so. Why? Well, when I sent the stolen money that was found in Kerry's pocket to our laboratory, they reported finding numerous particles of rosin in it. I'd say that ties in, Jim. Well, I... Oh, excuse me, please. Certainly. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Yes. Yes, Sergeant. Well, it's a big help, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. Now, goodbye. That was police headquarters, sir. They had a report from a local drugstore. On the poison? That's right. It was bought late yesterday by a woman whose description exactly fits that of Carrie's wife. Well. I'm going back to the carnival at once. <laughs> Well, Mr. Pomeroy, that's the story. I see. Has it changed your mind any about the suicide? It certainly has. And when Mrs. Carey gets here, will you talk to her as I ask? I'll be very glad to. Fine. By the way, has Lancaster ever seen you? No. No, that's why I'm hoping this plan will work. Come in. Hello, Mr. Pomeroy. Oh, hello, Mrs. Carey. Come in. Thanks. You sent word you wanted to see me. That's right. Oh, by the way, uh, this is Mr. Taylor. Uh. Yeah, we've already met. Yes, hello, Mrs. Carey. Hello. I have sent for you, Mrs. Carey, to tell you that the case is closed. Oh. That is, all but the recovery of the money. Mr. Pomeroy, I'm terribly sorry about the whole thing. I'm sure you are. I'm sure Frank was, too. I'm certain that if he hadn't been drinking, he never would have stolen the money. Oh, I'm sure of that. To show you that I've forgiven him, I, I want you to take his body home. Oh. He lived in Texas, didn't he? Yes. I'll arrange for your railroad tickets at once. You shouldn't do this. I insist. Now you wait right here until I make the arrangements. Hello there. Hi. My name's Taylor. Yeah? You the great Lancaster? That's right. I'm your new spieler. Oh, they're finally putting on an extra man, huh? Uh, well, I was originally hired to work for that guy who killed himself. Uh, what's his name? Kerry. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. Now that he's dead and his wife's going away, where well, there's no job there... What did you so say? Why, I said now that he's dead... No, I, I mean about his wife. Oh, oh, she's going away. Where did you get that information? Oh, she was just in the main office. The head guy gave her some railroad tickets. Are you sure of that? Yeah, Sure. For Texas. I heard her say she was going right back to her tent to pack. I guess what with her husband being dead and all, I did. Hey! Hey, where you going? May! May! What is it? I'm just 
in time, huh? For what? To nail you. What are you talking about? I'll stop the routine. What are you putting in those bags, laundry? No, I'm packing. I'm going to Texas. I'm taking Frank's body back home. That's a lie. You were going to run out on me. Oh, stop. As soon as I finished packing, I was going to come over and see you. As soon as you finished packing, you were going to walk out on me, and you know it. Now, why would I do that? For $30,000. 30000 that belongs to me. Stop yelling. I'll yell all I want to. I stole that money, and you're not beating me out of it. Roy, will you listen to me? I'm not running out on you. You've got to believe me. The last guy that believed you was dead. Will you shut up? Hey, you don't like to hear that, huh? You don't like to hear that you poisoned a guy. Roy, that's enough. It's too much, Mrs. What? Kelly. <laughs> the both said too much. Just as I hoped you would. What are you doing here? He's from the FBI. The... Now I'd like to start arranging for a trip for both of you. <laughs> Roy Lancaster was sentenced to 20 years by a federal court, then turned over to state authorities who found him guilty of attempted murder and gave him a life sentence. May Carey was also turned over to state authorities and sentenced to life imprisonment for murder. Now, tonight's case in the files of your FBI was solved because of one important factor. A special agent knew in advance how the minds of two criminals would react when confronted with a given situation. That, too, is part of the training given to every special agent before he becomes a member of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Your FBI has the force with which to combat force. But it has found that in many cases, the trained minds of the special agent was more than enough to protect you, the American people. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Remember, fathers and mothers, the finest investment you can make for your children is an equitable education plan, an investment they can never lose regardless of inflation or deflation, an investment that enriches their personality and increases their earning power. Don't delay. See your equitable society representative soon or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Night of Terror. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's program was transcribed and the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Night of Terror on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.